Hey, it's part two. I'm already laughing at my own. Well, they're not my jokes. I've gone out and done some research. Oh, you, you're just offloading responsibility already, Nick. No, they're pretty good. So I think that I'm being honest and transparent. I was tagged in a post. So some of our listeners obviously feel that my joke game needs a bit of help. And I was tagged in a post. And this one's all about nicknames and the origins of nicknames. So I've got a couple here for you that really tickled my fancy. The first one is... Some fella's dad has a mate who has half his ear missing. So they call him 18 months because he's only got an ear and a half. <laughs> and then another guy's boss was called Drill Bit because he was a small, boring tool. <laughs> and then there's another fella that worked in a factory and had a big hand and a small hand, so they called him Clock. Oh, that's so, that's so not 2024, but I love it. Well, here's my favourite one of all, not 2024. <laughs> this other guy, his nickname was Keth, and it took the guy ages to figure out that his real name was Keith, but he had an eye missing. <laughs> G'day, I'm Woz. And I'm Nick, sometimes Coxie, mostly Nick. This is the Tradies in Business podcast, and we're here to share a bunch of tips, ideas, tactics that you can put in place to get change happening in your trade business right now. If you're really lucky, we're going to entertain you with a few mum jokes and more importantly, a bunch of fantastic guests that will educate you in all things you need to know about trade business. But we do promise to do it with a whole bunch of fun along the way. I'm a self-confessed idiot, so strap yourself in and enjoy another episode. I love some of the old school, older generation humor that is now illegal and banned and stuff. They're, they're, they're hilarious. I think I've told you that uh, a family member of ours has is about to launch a drag car. Anyway, they all have names, these drag cars, and he's calling his drag car the red-headed stepchild because it's the thing that you flog when you had enough on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it still makes me laugh every time I think about it, particularly because my brother was a redheaded stepchild, but he was never flogged. I, I better just call that one for what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it does make me giggle. Nowadays, drag car, I think of a car dressed up in yeah. <laughs> alternative clothing. You've got to be careful here. You can get away with it, but as a middle-aged uh, white male, I probably have less latitude with that stuff. Oh, I don't know. Karen gets bandied about a fair bit. <laughs> You've had a few Karen moments. I have had a few. All right. So we're digging into part two of our Christmas special. Well, it's pre-Christmas special and it's not about gifts and presents and trees and all the Chrissy stuff. We're not going to play carols. We're actually talking about how to avoid uh, Christmas blindsiding you as we talked about in the previous episode. If you haven't listened to that one, go listen to part one first. It's a cracker. Get it? <laughs> Uh, but today we're going to make Christmas merry again for tradies everywhere. I feel like we should have called these the hangover special because we're, pre we're teaching here how to prevent a Christmas hangover. Can you imagine how many more listeners we would have got if we had have called this the hangover special? Mm, okay. Well, in hindsight, that'd be a good idea for next year, Nick. Yes. We, we could do better next Christmas, <laughs> which is really what this is all about, listeners. Yeah. We, we want you to implement as much of this as you can for this Christmas and then do it again next year because it works. So the, the things we're about to share with you, they work. Our tradiepreneur clients have done this stuff, not all of them, because I don't know, humans, we're slow to learn sometimes and we our own worst enemy, we learn stuff and go, oh, that's a really good idea. And then we don't do anything with it and bugger me dead if it doesn't work. Yep. Every time. It doesn't if you don't do it. So, but... Some of our clients have tested these strategies and they do actually work. So the cash flow stuff from last episode, that works. That has helped some of our clients actually take a holiday at Christmas mm. and come back to less stress and kick off the year better just by doing a boring, crappy, confusing spreadsheet for some of you. Uh, but if you push through that, it can work really well. And today we're talking about the second big one, which sounds a bit naff and counterintuitive uh, of marketing, Nick. Yes, yeah, that one key area that so many of us feel overwhelmed by at this time of year because we're so busy. 
And lots, when you think about the builders and the landscapers or those kind of trades that do longer term contracts, they generally have contracts that stretch out over Christmas and into the new year. Gosh, we've got some landscapers and builders that have got work for several years booked in and paid, you know, deposits paid already. But that doesn't mean they should stop marketing. It's just that it feels like another thing you have to do at this time when you're already too busy. And so we tend to let it go. But how many times have we seen, unfortunately, that dreadful sound of crickets when you come back to January, February, March? Because just like you, as a as a business owner, many of us have holidays. Not only have we just had this huge financial burden of Christmas, we roll into the kids going back to school. That's very expensive. You know, all these things happen in the very early part of the new year. And often we're not thinking as a consumer whether we want a, a renovation. Maybe we don't want a deck. Perhaps we don't want somebody to come and stick in the new cistern for a new toilet. You know, we're not thinking about those things in the early new year because they're not high on our priority list. They may have been high on our priority list prior to Christmas. And it's a great opportunity for us to start to book out that work as we're moving through December so that we come back to a full set of books. But there's other reasons why we continue to market, Warwick. Would you like me to fill the gaps? Use money to meta. No. And I don't advocate (laughs) for our tradies to be using meta for their marketing anyway. It's not necessarily the best spot for them to spend their money. But it, it means that we're top of the tree. So one of the things that happens is even in our circle, so we talk to a lot of educators in lots of styles of businesses And they all turn off or most of them turn off their marketing November, December, January. Why do they do this? Because they don't think it gets heard by people. Mm. The problem is when they come back in January, February and want to start marketing again, it takes forever to move through the learning process. And it doesn't matter what kind of area you're using your marketing in, there is a learning process until people start to consume it, feel comfortable with it, it's regularly seen we've moved through the no like and trust. So you've Mm. missed out on that period over Christmas when many of us are in downtime, we actually have time to consume and scroll to be top of the tree. We've stopped Mm. thinking about you. And so when your social media channels go quiet over the new year period, because you're taking a well-deserved break, that's great. But when you want them to be seeing you at the end of January, early February, because you've got no work booked in, they can't see you anymore because you've gone quiet and the algorithm won't show it up. Yep. And familiarity is such a really important part of marketing, Nick, <clears throat> where it's it's just marketing is about communication. You mm-hmm. think about having a relationship with somebody. Uh, if you stop talking to them, what are they going to think? Yeah. If they stop hearing from you. If you're in a relationship with somebody, it's long distance perhaps, or even just a friend, a mate, whoever, a family member, and you stop contacting them stop texting them, stop leaving missed calls on their phone. Yeah. They're going to think, oh, they don't care about me anymore. <clears throat> that relationship's going to shrivel. And so marketing is is about keeping the the energy in the relationship and the connection in your relationship with your client base, with your prospective clients, even if they're not buying from you right now. As Nick's saying, Putting your marketing out there over that period keeps you visible. <clears throat> as soon as you stop being seen, you stop getting thought about, and it's that whole out of sight, out of mind. And then when they have a need in February, guess where they're going to go? Google. And now you're screwed because unless you're the biggest listing on the front page and you're absolutely smashing all of your website uh, traffic tracking and sales process and you know automated customer contact and chat bots and all those things, they're going to go for the biggest company with the best reviews and the slickest looking website. And if that's not you, and if it is, well done, but why not keep them in your fold and not have them go to Google and risk losing them? For mm-hmm. most of you listening to this, you haven't spent all the money and the time to build out that amazing front end capture process for new leads. If you've been doing your marketing, just keep going. Consistency is is key. I think it's really important to note that this isn't just about social media. It's about all your forms of marketing. So if you're doing yeah. a monthly email, do it through Christmas as well. Don't let go. You want to be top of the inbox when they go searching. What was that plumber's got name again? Oh, that's right. He sent me an email in the Christmas week. I'm going to go and jump and see if I can find it. Or, you know, if you're doing a text-based campaign on a monthly basis, well, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Keep it consistent throughout this time. And if you're not doing anything, now is the time to start. start. 
Yeah. I know it feels like another thing to do, but if you don't, you're going to miss the opportunity to have that traction. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, um, and you know what, Nick, you said something else, which is a bit of the whole when others zig, you should zag. A lot of your competitors, so because you're listening to tradies in business, clearly you're ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, But a lot of your competitors, if you're a, if you're a Sparky doing maintenance work for Resi customers, most of your competitors are going to stop marketing over Christmas. Yeah. What a great time to jump the queue in your prospective client's inbox or social media feed or whatever it is, wherever you're putting yourself and actually get in front of some people who used to deal with old mate and old mate stopped marketing and they do the whole, oh, what was his name again? Hang on. Yeah. Isn't that that email I got? I don't know, but these guys sound really good. I'm sure this was them. That that happens. All it, the time. it absolutely happens. And I think one of the challenges, Coxie, for our listeners is they only know about their own business and their own experience. Yeah. You and I see hundreds of plumbers, electricians, builders, experiences. And so we can see a big sample size of what happens out in the marketplace. And we know that uh, the, the real estate stuff is, is a classic. And this is another area. Like if, if you're listening to this and you've been trying to get in with some property managers or get some body corporate work, but you can't because, oh, we've already got a plumber. Thanks. Christmas time is a great time to be marketing to those businesses because they don't shut down. They still have tenants. They still have maintenance that needs done probably more so because people are home or the kids are on school holidays and they're flogging the rental property and ripping the doors off the hinges. I don't know. Maybe that's what kids do. Uh, <laughs> the redheaded oh, stepchild. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so what better time than for you to actually run a campaign, emailing and sending out capability statements and stuff to property managers in your area, because they'll be desperate for tradespeople. Now, even if you're not working, it doesn't matter. Mm. Uh, your marketing is more likely to be seen and paid attention to because the rest of your competitors have gone AWOL. Mm. It's a crazy thing, this this paradox between being busy and then not having enough. It is It happens. It's just a sad reality, I think, of this time of year. We spend so much money coming into Christmas. If we've made some commitments to people prior to Christmas, we follow through generally. So, therefore, if you've got your work to book through, that's great. But if you don't, you need to be marketing now. And if you don't regularly market, you need to market now. Otherwise, you're going to be falling into that hole. And if you've got plenty of work and you feel like you shouldn't be marketing, you should be marketing even more because that gives you the opportunity for choice. You can choose who you want to serve. You don't have to deal with customers that are difficult or challenging or are going to waste your time. You can narrow it down and deal with the people that you enjoy dealing with rather than getting stuck in a situation where you have to lose the choice and do the shitty jobs that you don't want to do that might not make you all of the profit margin because you feel like you don't have any other option. All right. So as usual, I'm going to, I'm going to make a cheesy sales pitch here, Nick. And Look, that's give what a, we're here for, is it not? We've got an Give away our, our free information. Yes. <laughs> so we do this podcast and uh, actually, Nick, you and I were talking about this 600 and, 70 episodes, I think this makes, or six, six, nine or something crazy. Uh, 10 years, almost this thing's been giving away information for many, many years. And many of you have listened to every episode, which just does my head in. Uh, I think one of the most challenging things as you listen to this is it's just another thing for you to think about another thing for you to try and do when you've got a thousand and one other things to deal with. And then there's all the family stuff and the personal stuff. One thing that can really make a massive difference is getting a couple of people like us to give you an outsider's perspective and have a look at everything you've got going on and say, you know what, why don't you start with this? That's going to make the biggest difference to you. The way we do that is through what we call a business brainstorm session. You can book it on our website. It's free. It's Coxie and I. We'll both jump on a quick Zoom chat with you find out where you're at, find out what's working, find out what's not working and point you in the right direction. Now that may be our suggestion to work with us, but it may also be, Hey, just go and do some free training on this and, you know, make this change. And that's going to send you further down the path to where you want to be. 
So if you're interested in that at all, or you just want to steal our free training and resources, go to our website, all the dubs, tradesinbusiness.com.au. We love meeting tradies, especially at this time of year. It's such a challenging time of year for you all. Um, jump on a free chat with us and uh, we'd love to help you out. Thanks for listening. All right. <laughs>